Hey, what up, everybody? Uh, Stevie Breach coming to you. Uh, good morning today. I'm a little nervous. I have to go vote for this thing for my work. And uh, I'm off to do that. But before I'm leaving, I'm getting ready. Check out some wrestling news. And there is a story uh, coming out of the Raw House shows about how uh, a match really sort of took down the house last night. And it was from two guys that I think for most people would uh, surprise you that we get this much emotion out of the people out there. But... Um, two guys that I've been really looking forward to come out of uh, hiding uh, for the for the last uh, forever. Uh, Michael McGillicuddy, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Mr. Perfect Son, and um, Seth Rollins, a.k.a. Tyler Black from R Ring of Honor. Uh, there, there's a lot of guys out there that are packed full of FCW right now. Uh, I, I watched a whole, um, I guess it's from the uh, Wizard I guess it's like a Comic-Con thing. It was a CM Punk question and answer thing. I watched it all on YouTube. Uh, I linked both things on Twitter. I watched a lot of wrestling stuff last night because you have to go through a lot of links. But uh, it's on there, and, and it's honestly almost about an hour. And Punk talks about a whole bunch of stuff. The one thing that really hit the um, the news thing is that he talks about the new WWF title, or WWE title that is already made, that he's seen, that... He doesn't think is that much better than the one they have today, but it is a lot better than the one they have today. Because the one they have today, oh, it's right here. Uh, the John Cena spinner doesn't really relate with wrestling anymore. It's a, it's a title that should have been done a long time ago. I think it was supposed to be made for a short run. It sold real well, so they're going to make all the money they can off it. Uh, but back to the topic at hand. Uh, he talks uh, about a lot of guys, I and mean, a lot of guys happen to be Ring of Honor guys that are that are packed full of FCW right now. But he said that just about everybody down there has something different. Everybody, everybody down there has something that they could add to the main roster. And um, I'm glad that these guys are coming up. I'm glad that there's fresh meat on the roster. Uh, Michael McGillicuddy is a guy, uh, Joe Henning. Uh, he cut a he cut a promo, uh, basically saying that he wasn't like a lot of guys, and he wasn't riding the coattails of his father, which makes sense because he has a bad name in Michael McGillicuddy, and I, and I think that's uh, hurt him down the line. I, I look at the name McGillicuddy, and you can't really see it on a pay-per-view poster that's going to make you want to buy um, you know, a pay-per-view, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense in the end, but then again, I mean, it, it makes perfect sense to me. I just don't know how to you know portray that to you. Um, but you know, when, when he first came up to come to NXT at, at FCW, and FCW, he was a... Uh, multiple tag team champion he was a uh, a former uh, fcw uh, world heavyweight champion he, you know he held the ball down there and he was one of the prospects they looked at that was one of the best down there um i just remember when he first came up and he was res wrestling raw you know i don't know how you call them highlight matches or squash matches whatever whatever you want to be and they were they were putting him out there as joe henning and they even had him wearing the uh, Mr. Perfect singlet, and uh, it, it just it just wasn't him. So I think it was good that they broke him out, and he's not riding the coattails of his dad because his dad was Mr. Perfect, and he did everything to the best of his ability, and um, there was nothing that you know he really could do wrong, uh, and that's not the kind of wrestler that, that that he is. It's not the wrestler that he's going to be. So you can't really you know uh, take him out there and, and portray him as that. Um, but I, I saw him in the new Nexus. I remember when he won the uh, tag championships with David Otunga. And I think he won it on Raw. Uh, I'm not that quite sure. And I don't think they even held the titles that long. It, it wasn't that big of a deal. He hasn't really you know, seen a whole lot of success. In the new Nexus, he was sort of the guy in the background. He wasn't one of the, the main members. And um, I still looked at him. And I saw him. I picked him as uh, one of the guys I thought would be a future champion. I, I went out and I picked three guys. And I went over three. None of those guys that won the title, uh, and uh, one guy's out of the company. I picked John Morrison uh, as a guy that I thought was close that could get there. A guy that that uh, was in the mid card that could get there was uh, Ted DiBiase, which I don't know what the hell's happened to that guy. And then I picked Michael McGillicuddy as my you know, future star, the one guy that was out of the you know, way in the back that I thought could could make it. And uh, I, I still see promise in him, and and I'm glad that that. They haven't forgot about him because it's been a long time since he's seen the action on Raw or on SmackDown. And uh, one of my buddies that lives near me uh, that I follow on Twitter, Victor, I'm a Melfo. Um, you know, he's been talking about Miguel Cuddy versus uh, Rollins for the last, I don't know, I think it's been about a week now. That, you know, he goes to a lot of shows and he talks to a lot of people. He goes to a lot of shows. 
Uh, and he's been saying that, that uh, this has been in the match tonight for a while. So it's really cool. Um, I'm not the biggest Ring of Honor fan, but um, Tyler Black, Seth Rollins, uh, he was the uh, ROH World Champion when he signed to come over. And, and I think a lot of people are looking for him to come up. And, and he can do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, the one reason that I really got into Ring of Honor was uh, watching YouTube videos. People talk about it. P people passionately talk about it, like uh, freaking Yay88. Instant Classic 8, uh, both of those guys did a real good job putting over the product. Uh, Matt Beast, uh, when, he, when he made uh, videos, uh, they, they were really, really good. Um, the one person that really got me to watch Ring of Honor, because even though I watch these videos and people talk passionately about it, I always, like, I'm not going to go out of my way to watch indie wrestling, because I don't have a whole bunch of time for this, that, and the other, but when Jim and I put over Death, Death Before Dishonor 8, and uh, that was the show where... Um, Tyler Black wrestled Davey Richards in the main event. Um, you know, he really made it sound like, okay, I think I really do need to go out of my way and check this out. But, um, fresh meat on the way. I think it's going to be good. And, uh, let, let's see what everybody else has to offer. Another guy that I'm really looking forward to coming up is, uh, Chris Iro, uh, Cassius Ono. I think that's how you say it. Um, he has an even dumber name. <laughs> than McGillicuddy, but uh, we'll have to see because I think that guy's a whole bunch of talent and I want to see what he's got when he gets up there.